First up, Cal Poly Pomona, their submission, Foodways Connection, Mapping Food Resources to Build Food Security in LA. I'll pass uh, things over now to the team lead, Kathleen Blackstone, and let her introduce the rest of her team. Kathleen, thank you so much for being here. Um, over to you. Uh, thank you, Eugene. It's uh, great to be here today and to be returning. We appreciate being included. Uh, before we get started, I just want to acknowledge that I'm standing on Tongva land here in Compton and do this as a way of honoring our ancestors and uh, those that have come before us. But we made a real effort to work collaboratively and in fact, using our relationships and networks that we have to be uh, connected to the, the communities that we're part of. So I can uh, share my screen. And um, <clears throat> go through this deck. So we are uh, a group of um, scientists, plant scientists, geographers, food and nutrition scientists, architects, engineers, and uh, social scientists. And uh, we put together um, this work over the semester. And in fact, it was not part of a class. We were uh, volunteering our time. We are passionate about this issue and know that there are ways that we can improve uh, the food security in our city. I think we just heard quite clearly from, from Mark and Eugene about the sustainability plan goal number 10. We feel our project is also covering off some of the other goals, uh, maybe in a, to a lesser degree, but we are uh, you know, fiercely committed to this notion of development without displacement and encouraging participation by disempowered communities. So those are pieces that we have focused on this year. The need is great. We already heard, you know, over a million and a half people are food insecure in our county. And it's estimated to be one of the largest populations of folks without uh, resources of, to food in the nation. And uh, <clears throat> during um, no, we, we talked about that during the pandemic. Yeah, it was one in three households. We're back to being about one in 10. But to be clear, hunger is that um, personal physical sensation of discomfort. Food insecurity, it really is referring to this lack of financial resources for food at a household level. There's additional negative uh, impacts connected with that that include uh, poor nutrition, um, challenges with uh, cognitive function, sleep, mental health, and in fact, um, the diet-related diseases of obesity, uh, hypertension, and diabetes. So we feel like we have a better chance of improving food security if we share power with communities seeking change. We want to use the data that we've uh, uncovered this year to, to inform, learn, adapt, and really improve what those numbers look like. Last year, <clears throat> I just end here with a reminder that our vision was a foodway every quarter mile in our city so that people had access to good food. This year, we examined how close are we to that goal? And perhaps more importantly, how can we begin to achieve this? I'll introduce my colleague, Ms. Priscilla Torres. Hello everyone, I'm Priscilla Torres. I am a senior at Cal Poly studying agriculture science and urban and community agriculture. So what we're looking at here is our first map um, we started with data points collected with Cultivate LA websites, social media posts, and uh, the certified producers and farmers markets list. And we scrubbed the data down to 359 identified food waste. Uh, 
throughout LA County. And these foodways include urban farms, community gardens, farmers markets, community fridges, and healing gardens. And these are community oriented uh, foodways that often get overlooked in regular and traditional data analysis. Uh, this is our second map. Uh, we are looking at food deserts. So based on the census tract, LA County has identified 65 food deserts. Eight of those food deserts are being um, serviced by a foodway um, that you can see on this map. And here we have land coverage. So you can see the clusters of foodways, the blue points um, in medium and high density developed areas in LA County. And based on that, you can see the tension between the open space that can be used for growing food, but it competes with commercial, industrial and residential development. That's also a big issue here in LA County. Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Lutz and I'm a junior in the geography program here at Cal Poly. And I'm gonna just give a little information about the maps that uh, I helped our team to create. So starting with our identified food waste points, which as Priscilla mentioned, you can see there in the light blue, uh, we wanted to show the areas around them that were potential service areas. Uh, to achieve this, we used a geoprocessing technique known as Thiessen polygon, uh, because these polygons define an area of influence from a given sample point in this case, our foodways, so that any location inside the polygon is closer to that point than to any other on the map. We then cross reference these points with data collected from Cal Enviro Screen 4.0, which is a, shine, a shining national example of important uh, demographic and other data collected by the state of California about its residents and cities and towns. From this analysis, you can see how the hypothetical service area of each foodway is relatively impacted in a variety of ways. Uh, for instance, in this map uh, on the left, you can see the areas in which poverty levels are relatively higher. Uh, as you can see, mostly in central LA, near the, port, uh, near the port and some in Antelope Valley. Uh, cardiovascular issues are identified in this data by the rate of heart attack ER visits per 10,000 residents. And again, you can see how central LA and the port are both heavily affected. Um, Uh, as well as, you know, Antelope Valley, uh, San Fernando Valley as well. Um, and then on the last slide there, you can see how the population intersects with these foodways, uh, highlighting areas in which more people rely on single foodways. And then lastly, our pollution map on the right there shows once again how foodways in central LA as well as those in East LA are all burdened by pollution. Thank you, Ryan. So this leads us to our last map here and this notion of walkable resiliency. These blue dots on the screen are basically the 15 minute environment for each foodway of the Thiessen analysis that we've done. And you can see from the white space that there is still a tremendous amount of work to do. So we return to these notions of equitable food-oriented development. If you recall <clears throat> from last year, we realized that access alone is really not enough. And we're seeking to understand these social, environmental, and economic conditions that are impacting our low-income residents through the use of an inclusive and accessible protocol that leads to this civic science and civic action this is really only possible because we took an interdisciplinary approach. The maps have revealed where communities who are most in need uh, are the ones that we've chosen to uh, support and build solidarity with. We've tried to make this issue more approachable and use these tools to so showcase why we're focusing where we are. So as a result, we, in this process of developing a community-owned and managed research that leads to civic action, 
we have been meeting with the Watts Labor Action Committee and uncovering and want to uncover foodway responses that these neighbors want. We know that food systems are a great container for health and community development because many low income residents have a rich heritage in food production. We have prepared initial opportunity maps so that we might conduct a food audit. We've reviewed these with the team there and are basically ready for the next step. They have shared, they have a community uh, commercial kitchen that they will be installing up here at the new Mudtown Farms. They have the resources to build out the structure, but not the information on what their community actually wants and needs in that commercial kitchen. So there's programming, there's the actual food business incubation and a number of other areas that they would like to, to have uncovered. And because food can mend our social and economic and political fabric of our city, we feel it's been essential to uncover these spaces in ways in which this mending can take place. Our maps have revealed these areas for deeper exploration. And we, we chose to work with Watts Labor Action Committee because they have been active for many decades in this neighborhood. And they've been working to connect health outcomes, economic development and community power. We know that foodways offer a common thread to continue the mending. And we asked Pando to commit financial resources to continue the work on the ground, in the field, in the kitchen, and with our most burdened communities. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, a very powerful and fascinating presentation, of course. Uh, here to respond to the Cal Poly, Cal Poly Pomona project is CSO Task Force and Advisory Council member Robin Eason. Robin is the Long Range Planning and Sustainability Manager for the City of West Hollywood. Uh, Robin, over to you. Thanks, Eugene. Hi, everyone. Hi, Cal Poly team. Um, that was an incredible, powerful, short presentation. I like. It was such a tease to me. I wanted to know, <laughs> wanted to know so much more, and I'm sure you guys have been working really hard behind the scenes. So, um, I don't know, maybe a coffee time at some point in the future is in order. But um, I think I just wanted to start out by um, really applauding and uplifting how intersectional the thinking has been around the power of food and um, how food security really enables and empowers communities to be able to take care of themselves and their families um, and each other. Um, I think that's a really important point. I also love the intersection of um, economic justice and uh, public and community health. I think all of those benefits uh, that come from the central source of having enough food and having a place that it can be grown locally um, are just essential to, essential principles to uplift. So just applauding you for that comprehensive approach. Um, uh, I guess um, one of the things, I guess one of the questions I had related to the community kitchen was just uh, in terms of maybe like the, the programming for that, how or what is the vision if there is one yet of getting the inputs from the community to really outline what magic will happen at that community kitchen? Thank you, Robin, for those kind words and your um, question. I also want to share, we do have a um, ARC um, GIS story map that has a lot mm -hmm. more of the details and some maps where you can actually zoom into each uh, thesis and polygon and the food way and see population, uh, you know, just have a better sense of a more um, zoomed in look, which is why we chose the Watts group. Uh, we started our conversations that they need to lead the the science right that they're they want to find out what their residents want what food they should grow in the field and then what kind of need there is in their own community they're doing a great job using the farm and and sharing food 
only in their uh, own community. So they have a lot of practice with that. And so we would be there to partner with them, do the analysis. You can see the skill set that, that Dr. Granko and the students have built up around the geography piece. The, these are the skills that we want to bring to the table and look at what we're, we're it, well, it's named in science today is community driven science, different from citizen science, which is when we volunteer to help a researcher answer their own question. This is for Watts Labor Action Committee and, and their partners to create the questions that we will then gather data and present on. Got it, got it, I love it. Yeah, and you guys really answered my other question, which was, um, you know, was there a way to kind of really drill down into the maps? Because I think that um, as you start to tell your story, that'll be a really important piece to kind of keep in the forefront for um, funders and, and other folks that might wanna invest in what you all are doing. So happy that that's already been thought of and is available um, to some extent. So great job, that's all, that's all I have. Thank you so much, Robin, and thank you again, Kathleen and your team.